Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm pleased to see so many people at this meeting, this debate about open access, publishing, and writing, doing science in an open access environment. Where do you stand? That's the question for today. We have four speakers from different perspectives to talk about this subject. Uh, we have the researcher, the editor, the PhD, and the institution. Um, open access is free, immediate, online availability of research articles with full reuse rights. This is about, first of all, making all this content available for anyone, wherever they are in the world, to read and access and build upon so people can do interesting things and work in new ways with the material to really make the research literature much more valuable. The journals aren't producing the material. The journals don't employ the people who write the papers. They don't even employ the people who review the papers. And it doesn't make a lot of sense in terms of what science is supposed to be about. The scientific publishing model that we have now, there's no evidence that it is optimal. We need to experiment with all sorts of different scientific publishing systems. We have created a very problematic relationship between the career paths of researchers and the dominance of the scientific publishing industry. It's not only about the individual researcher getting his or her individual article out there. There's a lot more happening in the uh, publication industry, scientific scholarly publishing, with very big consequences for exactly that point about what builds a reputation of an individual researcher. What is considered authoritative activity? My proposition is that we should loosen the reputation effects connected with high-impact journals during that transition towards open access publishing. And in order for this to happen, it is crucial to diminish the role played by publishers in the career paths of researchers. As I said, we're going to vote on the proposition or the position uh, Sarah has uh, handed out. The role played by publishers in the career paths of researchers must be seriously diminished. One for agree, two for disagree. Okay, we have 91 votes. <laughs> we have agree, agreement, 89% uh, and 11% disagrees the biggest issue in, in open access. I think the double dipping is the fact that we spend all kinds of work for free, right, and others earn the money. I think that is the biggest issue that, and that, you know, you, you don't, cannot access certain articles uh, which you would like to access, right? That, that just drives you mad. And I agree with the statement made before that the career path of young uh, researchers is entirely in our hands, not in the hands of the publishers. What I would like to talk about today is a different model that is possible, a different model of academic uh, publishing that is possible, um, and that, it's, that I call fair open access. So this is basically the model that we want to develop. We want to move from the initial stage of subscription-based publishing, going through a transition of five years where the APCs are po paid uh, for by uh, public financial guarantees and organizations like Lingua facilitating these things within small disciplines, because we think disciplines are crucial in this. I mean. Yes. And then find to arrive at the final stage where you get, uh, get APC-based publishing by uh, a consortia like uh, the Open Library of the Humanities. Uh, the second position we'll be uh, voting about today is uh, one we have on the screen right now. Those agreeing, 65, 75% and the rest disagreeing. I mean, I think what you're doing is... Very good. I'm also not convinced that all the different uh, fields should use exactly the same model, right? So for you, this may be the best field. I think in astronomy, what we do now is quite... I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Okay. And that means you're not dependent on a small number of people who happen to be on the board. Right. You automatically have long-term mm -hmm. uh, certainty. Yeah, no, okay, but I have, I have no problem with that, because I, I also think that learned societies could own the journal. What I don't want is publishers owning it. I think what we should not lose, and what is very important, yeah. is the quality mark of papers. And I think uh, I'm actually an editor of a low-impact journal, and I reject 90% of what I get, and they come never into uh, the public domain, or they come in high-impact journals, where pathology is often not very carefully reviewed. So I think that you, we need the quality stamp of learned societies indeed, 
uh, who are associated with journals, who can give that quality stamp to what is there, not only for the researchers, but also for students who have to find their way in this massive amount of literature, for patients in our hands, because they read the journals as well, and the articles, and the lay public. And we need to have a model by which this can be paid, and actually by which these learned societies can be sustained. I think we can all agree that there is one major goal in the working life of a PhD student, and that's to finish his thesis, or her thesis. And in order for that to happen, you have to uh, publish papers, and the papers need to be accepted. We expected um, the PhD students to support open access from a sort of idealistic point of view. Um, but then again, at the beginning of your scientific career, also other factors like status and impact factors, already mentioned by Johan, play an important role. So we also uh, wondered if that uh, might be a factor influencing the choice for a journal. If I had to choose, I would rather publish in a high impact journal than in an open access journal. Uh, I voted against this, uh, and not as a PhD student, since I think a PhD student should favor this proposition for selfish reasons. But because the entire system based on metrics like impact factor should be opposed, and it's very bad, as has been pointed out by various people before. So this position is part of a much wider framework, I think. Actually, the validity of a PhD thesis seems to be assessed by the number of papers in it that have been published and even the cum laude regulation is defined by the impact factors of the journals. Yeah, that's true. This, this is crazy. So that's why I voted against. To have a sort of quality measure is, uh, is, is so critical. And it's like democracy. It's the worst system that there is no better. Yeah, so I'm a PhD student and at the Radboud UMC. And if it was my choice, I would go for open access. But that's generally also not my choice. Do you feel like your supervisors maybe play a role in it? Too? Yeah, supervisor and all co-authors. Even if a PhD student is first author, it doesn't necessarily mean they get to decide where the paper is published. <coughs> Fact-based research presented in a white paper by the Max Planck Digital Library in April of this year has shown that open access can be realized at no additional cost, even though the commercial publishers would like us to believe otherwise. And this explains the very fitting title of the LERU, the League of European Research Universities, they brought out a statement on open access earlier this week with a very nice title, Christmas is over. <laughs> research funding should go to research, not to publishers. When signing its previous contract, Elsevier, like so many other publishers do, they demanded a non-disclosure agreement, part of the divide and rule tactics. And this in particular I find very harmful. That's why I'm calling on academic institutions to refuse to sign contracts that come with non-disclosure agreements. The agreements we make with publishers should also be subject to open access. And as you may know, I represent the Dutch universities at the negotiation table with Elsevier. And our position has been and remains publish and open access and be transparent about your finances so that everyone can see that the universities are paying a reasonable fee. And I would love to hear from you whether you endorse this position and whether you're prepared to bear its consequences which might be a complete termination of the contract with some of the commercial publishers. What this shows to me is that everybody here feels that, that you should be open about what it actually costs. Right. And, uh, and nobody, we, we want an agreement with a publisher that, and an agreement that is sustainable for the publisher, but also sustainable for us. And we're right now, right now in a system that is very sustainable for the commercial publishers, mm -hmm. very profitable, uh, but it's no longer sustainable for the universities. Who is in favor of going to an open access system as soon as possible? We're all willing to pay for services that are really provided. We're all willing to pay them the cost they really make and they're also allowed to have a, a decent profit so it's sustainable. No problem with that. But we should know these numbers. We should just openly discuss that. It should be transparent. We should know what we pay and we should know what we get for that. We should also be able to say what we want and what we don't want, right? To conclude, we have to, uh, you might say, search in our hearts for the best way to go forward, since it's not only the publishing houses playing a role in this difficult discussion, but also the university system, the hospitals, 
and even the researchers themselves, from PhD students to professors. In the end, there is no better system than, than peer review. Other experts have to evaluate what you have done, and they should be sufficient experts to not be misled by in which journal a certain um, article has appeared, but, but just look at the content of that. And the good news is that only scientists can do that. And so we can get back, and I speak now as a scientist, I mean, we can, come back, can get back in control and have to make sure we get back in control.